Hi, in this video I'm going to explain what the Thor token is, how it's used, and how it is different from the Rune token of the ThorChain blockchain. If you're unfamiliar with ThorChain and ThorSwap, a super brief summary is that ThorChain is a blockchain and protocol that aims to allow users to swap between native currencies on different blockchains. And ThorSwap is the user interface and decentralized exchange platform that is used to do that. So with ThorSwap running on ThorChain, users can swap between native Bitcoin and native Ethereum without a centralized exchange. In order to understand the Thor token, let's first talk about the Rune token. So what is the Rune token? It is the native token of the ThorChain blockchain, and it's used for participating in the network and to pay for gas fees. Also, it's used to provide liquidity on ThorSwap and for settling swaps. So, so for example, the Rune token is used for facilitating swapping between native Bitcoin and Ethereum on ThorSwap using those liquidity pools. It's also used in network security where it incentivizes node validators to do the right thing. So nodes need to bond a certain amount of Rune tokens in order to validate the blockchain and then receive rewards for doing so. If they do something malicious, then their bonded Rune tokens will be slashed or be, become worthless. The last thing is uh, governance. So Rune token holders can vote on proposals to change the ThorChain protocol and affect change in a democratized way. You can think of the Rune token as, you know, AVAX is to the Avalanche network and the Binance coin is to the Binance smart chain. It serves a very similar purpose in that it's used to pay for gas fees and it's used for governance and it's used to incentivize validators to do the right thing. That brings us to what the Thor token is. So the Thor token is different from the Rune token in that it is the utility token of the ThorSwap platform. The Rune token is the native token for the Thor chain blockchain, but the Thor token is the utility token of the ThorSwap platform. So it's kind of a, a smaller scope in what it does compared to the Rune token. So the first thing it's used for is governance and membership. So Thor token holders can vote on changes for the ThorSwap platform. It's kind of like a membership token. You get special perks and incentives for holding the Thor token. It also incentivizes trading activity and I, I went through the docs, but this has yet to be functionalized on the ThorSwap platform and it's still being developed. And finally, it can be staked um, to get the VThor token back uh, and that's used for cashback and further details are going to be released. So these things can be found on the documentations of the ThorSwap platform. And here where it says staking, um, Thor tokens will give you the V Thor receipt token back. Stakers will receive cash back, fee discounts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that the the details for this is still currently in the works. Just keep in mind that we don't precisely know what this cash back means yet. I'm going to quickly summarize the differences and similarities between the Thor and Rune tokens before going into what I can do with the Thor token and walk through some of those processes. For similarities, Thor and Ruin both have a 500 million cap supply and that's being emitted on a, a set schedule across multiple years. And then at, at a high level, they function to give holders governance abilities and incentivizes behavior. And that's pretty much where their similarities stop and the rest are differences. So their scope is different in that Thor is for the ThorSwap exchange and Rune is for the entire Thor chain network. So it's Rune is used for gas fees and, and providing liquidity. So users can't technically stake Rune tokens. And what I mean by stake here is in the same manner as Ethereum is staked in order to validate the blockchain, users can't really stake the Rune token and receive a return unless they're trying to be a node validator. That currently is the case. Maybe in the future, that's not going to be true. Maybe some services will pop up to allow retail investors to stake Rune token, but for now, that's not possible. However, you can stake the Thor token in order to receive back more Thor. And the last thing here is that users can bond Thor as a retail investor. And what I mean here by bond is not what nodes are doing on the Thor chain blockchain, but instead bonding Thor as a retail investor is a way to get discounted Thor tokens in exchange for another asset. And I'll show later on how this can be done to get discounted Thor. Okay, how can I get some Thor tokens? The easiest way is to go to Thor Swap Finance and then go and swap some cryptocurrency for the Thor token. 
as long as I have a compatible wallet connected, I can swap native Bitcoin, I can swap Ruin, I can swap Litecoin, Ethereum, whatever the ThorSwap platform supports, I can swap that with the Thor token. There are two versions here. One is the synthetic version of the Thor token and one is the ERC-20 version of the Thor token. Most of the time at this point, people are gonna be interacting with the ERC-20 version of the Thor token. So that's probably gonna have the most liquidity. All I have to do is input the amount of Bitcoin I want to swap to Thor tokens. And then once I'm satisfied with that conversion, I can click swap and then receive the Thor token in my MetaMask or whatever wallet I'm using. What about staking? So if I go into the Thor section here on ThorSwap, I can go to stake. And then there are three pools here where I can stake that is related to the Thor token. And these two are for providing liquidity. So for these two pools, you have to use two tokens in order to deposit into, into the pools. And that's Ethereum and Thor for this one, and then Thor and Rune for this one. So for actual staking, I would be using this pool or this vault, whatever you want to call it. And at this point, this pool provides an about an 81% APR. So a non-compounding earn rate on my Thor tokens. I couldn't find anything in the docs or anything online about how this APR is calculated, but I would think it is the APR return based on how much I've put in. So if I put in 100 Thor tokens, then over the course of a year, I will receive back 81. Keep in mind that this is useful if you're bullish on the thor token it it's definitely better than just holding it since you can get some return and if you're long-term bullish on the thor token then this is probably the way to go please keep in mind that if i want to stake in this vault then i have to connect my metamask wallet or whatever wallet i'm using and connect to the ethereum network because that is the thor token that is being staked here is the ERC-20 version of the Thor token. Same thing with this liquidity pool. And the last one is specifically for the Thor chain blockchain. So these Thor and Rune tokens are both the native versions that operate on the Thor chain blockchain. The last thing I'm going to walk through and talk about is bonding the Thor token. So if I click on bond here, it brings me to this page, uh, Olympus Pro. And if you guys are familiar with Olympus, it was a DAO that pioneered the bonding mechanism. And now this bonding mechanism is used by many other platforms in order to basically fundraise. So what's happening here is I, as a retail investor, can give the ThorSwap protocol three different type of assets. The first asset is Thor Ethereum liquidity pool tokens or the Ruin ETH liquidity pool tokens. And finally, I can also give the native Ruin token. I can give these things a value in return for discounted Thor token. So that is the payout asset. And this is the input asset where I'm giving to the Thor swap protocol. These ROIs here are the discounts that I get on the market price of the Thor token if I bond these assets. So when I say bond, I just mean give these assets to ThorSwap in return for discounted Thor. Now, if there's a negative percentage here, that means there's a lot of demand for this bond and I'm actually losing money on the discount. It's not actually a discount, it's a premium. If it's positive, then it's a discount. So what this means is I will have a 3% discount on the market price of Thor if I give Ruin to the Thor swap protocol in return for Thor tokens. And TBV is the total bonded value. It indicates how much value has been bonded the respective uh, bonded assets. And why would uh, Thor swap do this? It's basically a fundraising mechanism. So it's a win-win for each party because Thor swap will get valuable assets in into their treasury. And then whoever is doing the bonding will get discounted Thor tokens, which they can immediately sell for a profit or hold long term if they're bullish on the Thor swap platform. So in order to bond, I just have to have these assets in my wallet already. Click bond and then go through the uh, process of bonding it. But 
here what it says is the bond price is greater than the market price which means i'll be losing money on the on the thor token if i bond using thor eth lp token these roi numbers are constantly changing so if you are looking to bond some assets in order to get back discounted thor tokens then you should come back and and check to see if these numbers are positive right now it's profitable to bond using the rune token but it's not profitable bond using the Thor Ethereum LP token or the Ruin Ethereum LP token. The last thing to keep in mind is that if I'm bonding to get some discounted Thor tokens, then there is a vesting term that I have to wait until I get all of the tokens. So on ThorSwap, this vesting time is seven days. So that means I won't get all of the Thor tokens that I've bonded until seven days have passed. In those seven days, the Thor token could move in price and if it goes down enough, then I could have bought um, the Thor tokens at a lower price and this would not be a, a good strategy. But if the Thor token went up sufficiently in price and I bought it at a discount, then I can immediately sell it for a quick profit. Okay, so that's it for this video. Hopefully this uh, clears up some things about the Thor token compared to the Rune token. And then I've shown a couple of ways that the Thor token can be used. Uh, first by staking and then by bonding. Let me know if you're bullish on the Thor token moving forward in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and click subscribe. And let me know if you want to see more videos on the Thor chain project and the Thor swap platform moving forward. As always, stay safe, stay safe, and thanks for watching.